This video demonstrates the use of Optum G2 for calculating bearing capacities of shallow foundations. The general bearing capacity problem is the one shown here. We have a footing of width B, we have some surcharge acting next to the footing Q, and then we have the footing load, the ultimate magnitude of which we want to determine, we call that QU. The soil is a more coulomb soil with a cohesion, a friction angle, and a unit weight. For the general case, uh, Tazaki's bearing capacity equation is often used, it's shown down here, so the ultimate limit load is the sum of three contributions related to the cohesion, the surcharge, and the unit weight. We have the three bearing capacity factors, NC, NQ, and N gamma, which all depend on the friction angle. Now, Tazaki's bearing capacity equation in the general case is not exact, it's on the safe side, it's conservative, but in some special cases it is exact, and the two special cases that we'll consider in the following are the ones where we have only uh, an C contribution, so we have no surcharge and the unit weight is zero, and then in the second case we'll consider the case where the cohesion is zero and the surcharge is zero, but the unit weight is non-zero. So these two special cases apply the first one to undrained analysis of clay where the C would be the SU, the undrained shear strength, and the second one is relevant for drained analysis of clay or of sand where we have a purely frictional material uh, with a unit weight. Now regarding the bearing capacity factors, NC has been known for many years and we have an analytical solution for it as well. Uh, same for NQ, whereas in gamma, uh, there's no an analytical solution for in gamma, but uh, very accurate solutions uh, have been uh, computed, um, so accurate that you can consider them actually exact. They have been computed by Chris Martin from Oxford University, who's published a table of bearing capacity factors as function of the friction angle, and for in gamma, there's a dependence on the footing roughness as well. So. The first column here is for a perfectly smooth footing over to a perfectly uh, rough footing in the last column. Um, the table can be downloaded here from Chris Martin's uh, web page. The two numbers we'll be using in the following are for the first analysis, uh, the undrained analysis, so we have zero friction, and NC is the well-known 2 plus pi, 5.149. And in the second analysis we'll be using a friction angle of 30 degrees. Uh, and assume a perfectly rough footing, in which case the bearing capacity factor is 14.7543. Now I'll be also be actually only analyzing half the problem, so I'll um, exploit the symmetry of the problem and only model half the problem as shown here. Furthermore, for the first analysis I'll be assuming a undrained shear strength SU of 1, in which case the bearing capacity is just this number here. And in the second analysis, I'll assume a unit weight of 1 and a footing half width of 1 as well, and the bearing capacity is this number here. So let's switch to Optum G2 and see if we can uh, compute these two solutions with reasonable accuracy. And I'll first draw the soil domain, something like that, put a footing on top here. I will then go to materials, and for the first analysis, the undrained analysis, I'll be using the Tresca basic material. I'll modify the parameters, I'll use a SU of 1, and for the footing, I'll be using a rigid material. Features for standard fixities to support the soil domain and also the footing up here horizontally, basically to account for uh, symmetry. And then I'll apply a multiplier distributed load on the footing, and I will use a reference value not of 1, but a reference value, a reference load equal to the exact bearing capacity, so 5.1459. Um, so in that case, a load multiplier of 1 is what we're looking for. That reproduces then the exact solution. A load multiplier less than 1 will correspond to a lower bound, and 1 greater than 1 will correspond to an upper bound. 
We want to do limit analysis. Uh, that's the default analysis type, so we'll stay with that. And we would like to calculate both upper and lower bounds. In the first analysis, we can calculate lower bounds, so keep the element type uh, at lower. Let's use a thousand elements and let's use mesh adaptivity. And then we'll clone this stage and in the second stage, in the clone stage, switch to element type upper. So we now have two identical stages, except in the first stage here, we calculate lower bounds, so let's call that LBNC, and in the second stage, we calculate upper bounds. And let's set the analysis running. So we go through uh, three adaptivity iterations, and the results are as shown here, a lower bound of 0.98, so basically 98% of the exact solution, and an upper bound of about 1.02, 1.03, so a couple of percent above the exact solution. Um, the accuracy you can see is very good, a couple of percent error, and if you actually take the mean value between these two uh, upper and lower bounds, then you get a very uh, accurate estimate of the exact their bearing capacity. The collapse mechanism, first there's some plastic strains and you can see this sort of looks quite like the um, Prandtl mechanism which constitutes the exact solution and you see as well the mesh has been of course adapted to capture this solution in the best possible way. Now on to the second analysis and I will clone the first stage here and then I will apply a different material. I'll apply the medium sand MC. It's one of the default materials in Optum. It's just a, a more Coulomb material. I will change the parameters. Uh, friction angle of 30 degrees and a unit weight of 1. The load on the footing, again, I will apply a reference load equal to the exact solution for this case which was 147543 like that um, this the element type is already set to lower I'll keep that I will call it LBNG and then I'll clone the stage and switch to element type upper I will call that UBNG and I'll run the analysis and see what I get. So we now see that the accuracy is not nearly as good as in the previous example. We have a lower bound of about uh, 0.84 and an up bound of, of a bound of about 1.12. So um, less accuracy than in the first solution, which is not really surprising considering that the in gamma problem is in every way a much more challenging and much more difficult problem than the NC problem. So this is uh, actually quite expected uh, and yeah, you see the, the adaptive mesh here uh, and you see some of the strains. You see an extreme uh, concentration of deformation at this singular point where the f edge of the footing uh, meets the soil and this is one of the things that makes this problem very challenging, this uh, singular point here. So, but to improve the accuracy of the solutions, well, the way to do that is to use more elements. So let's, instead of a thousand, use 10,000 and see what happens. Things, of course, the calculations, of course, take longer, but the accuracy also uh, gets better. So the lower bound now from 0.84 to 0.92, that's a pretty significant improvement, and the upper bound from 1.12 to 1.05, also quite an improvement, but still a bit of a gap between the upper and lower bounds. And we have plastic strains here, you see uh, a much more defined um, plastic strain field. Again, you see the problem with the singular point up here at the edge of the footing. And the way to overcome this problem, or at least alleviate it to some extent, is to use a combination of a mesh fan. So 
the mesh fan creates a fan of elements around this point which usually um, improves the accuracy. Also we can have a, a, um, and we can specify the mesh size at this point. So apply the mesh size feature and I will go for a very small mesh size 0.01 and I will do the same for the upper bound stage. So a mesh fan and a mesh size of 0.01 and then let's see what happens. See if that can improve the accuracy. And indeed the lower bound is, is now uh, less than 2% in error, so 0.983, and the upper bound a similar accuracy, an error of about 2%. Again, if you take the mean value between the upper and lower bounds, you end up with with a result that's that's spot on. Um, you can see the mesh here again, and if we zoom in on the singular point, we can see that we have used an extremely fine mesh. You see the mesh fan here, you know, a fan of elements, and then we have a uh, quite extreme concentration of elements around this singular point, which in this case is, is what is necessary, and it's what makes this problem challenging. So that concludes the analysis. Um, there's a lot more uh, problems, uh, examples of this type in our examples manual which comes with the program. It can also be downloaded from our webpage optimce.com and you can also download the uh, program from there.